Let's do the thing. Let's do it. Let's do it like we're doing it. In the do it space. You're not my type. I wasn't asking you. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reaction Idiots of Corbin. And... Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more Instagram, Twitter, 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 does it? I think it does. I could be wrong. <laughs> um, but it came out in 2009. It's an Anyar Kashyap film. Yes. Surprisingly, we've only seen, if you include Gangs of Wasper as one film, six Anyar Kashyap directed films. That's about right, I think. It just seems like more, because obviously he's done a bunch of, he, we, he's written. Devdi, Gangs of Wasper, Raman Rag of 2.0, uh -huh. this, uh, um, Black Friday. Black Friday. And then what's the sixth one? Um, Devdi. I keep I keep wanting to say uh, Bombay Velvet, but we, we, have, no, we haven't we seen have, it. We want to. We haven't We've seen it. We want to see it. Um, anyway. Anyways, uh, oh, but technically, if you include Sacred Games as well, though, he directed Sacred he, Games. Yes. And he's done a bunch that. He's mm. written a bunch. We've seen a that's, bunch that he's been one of the writers. Yeah, so that's why yeah. it seems like, you know, we've seen his a name ton is everywhere. of Anyar up films, but technically, of his directed stuff, if you include Gangs Wasper as one film, I think we've only seen six. Okay. Uh, but, yes, 2009, uh, film by Anyar Kashyap, written, uh, at least the dialogue by Anyar Kashyap. It's yeah. also written by Raj Singh. Uh, Raj Singh Chowdhury, who also stars in the film. Correct. Uh, and and the then, story, Sanjay Maria. And then it's composed by... Uh, Pyosh Mishra, who also stars in the movie. Yeah, it's uh, amazing, this collaborative effort and all. And I, I heard, you can let me know if this is correct or not, I think this took four years to film. That is correct. Uh, I saw that it took, he started it in 2001. And he only filmed in Diwali. Yeah. So they get their lighting right, yeah. but for cheaper. Right. Essentially. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that went into that. This has been on my radar for a long time. I think it was, the, what, his third film? Second or third yeah, film? Yeah, part of the reason this was on our radar is because when we were first introduced to KK Menon, everybody was saying this is one of those you want to see KK yeah. Menon in. Yeah. And, of course, on your Kasha. Of course. Whom we love. Yeah. Um, but, and one, still one of my favorite songs on my playlist. Still one of my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, so it's been on our radar for a long time, so we've been meaning to get to it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. I don't know where you can watch it. I had to buy the DVD. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> that is the only it's, place. It's, it there's, sucks. there's one site that has it, but the audio is complete shit. Uh, and so, you know, I hate, I don't ever want to watch a film that, like, either the video quality shit or right. the, the audio the sound. It ruins the... Yeah, it we need it. good audio, good visuals, and you need, for us, we need the subtitles to be accurate yes. and good. Anyway, so, so this is going to be 100 Spoiler. It came out in 2009. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Please come back. Yes. Rick, your initial thoughts. So uh, this is one of those movies that is proof positive of a number of things. One of them being that just because a film doesn't do well box office-wise doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the film. Mm -hmm. Because this didn't do well at the box office. It didn't have word of mouth, and that's because... There's a steady diet of certain things that happen in all movie industries that this doesn't fall into that category. This kind of film falls into the category of people who love higher level storytelling, the elevative purpose of motion pictures. It again just confirms that Anya Kashyap is the man, one of my favorite directors. I can go on and on. So you I hated just, it. I loved Baho Bali Two or this. What? It's 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 right. It's right in that. Sorry, I just had to make right you. I just had to make you mad. Yeah, uh. yeah. And, and I will actually will say something about that in a second because I I do want to harp a little bit on the fact that there are a lot of purposes for movies and entertainment is a purpose. But when we're talking about the more higher elevative purposes based on the design of storytelling in movies. Yes, I'm gonna annoy some of you and I don't care because design reveals purpose. Uh, this just hits the mark of the kind of film that you expect from Anya Kashyap and the kind of film that the international community will look at and go, dang, that's great on a bunch of levels. So, yeah, I, I loved it as yeah, well. I love Obviously, this. this is, 
I don't think there was any question that I would like this film when it ended. It's just one ended how, you know, I like films to end with death. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but also some great performances. Great performances. I'm so glad we got to see this one because I've said it for a while because um, he get, came in and gets mentioned in the same breath of our favorites. Correct. Nawaz, Correct. Irfan, uh, Manoj, Pankaj, all those, the people that we Niraj. just- Yeah, Niraj, the people that we just absolutely adore yeah. uh, and, and respect their artistry. He always gets mentioned that. And I think we've only, outside of this, I think it was two things before this. Two it things Black in Friday yep. and, and, and a header, which I- Black Friday header, and we saw the scene of him oh, on yeah. the remake of the-, remake. the uh, That's right. Few good um, and we've seen his trailers and stuff, but uh, of his films, we'd only seen, this is the third one we've seen, and I kind of had a uh, Renvere belly boy moment with him, because when we him. watched Header, I said he was one of the most the people that I was just, he was okay. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really just because I'm drawn to more eccentricities in, in characters and more like quirky kind mm -hmm. of characters. Yeah. But I didn't know the man. Just like right. when we watched Gully Boy, I didn't know Ren Fear. Exactly. So I didn't know like what, not that this, not that Header was a stretch for him. Right. It's but very, it's, very different because they're very different guys. <laughs> but like seeing him and like, I've watched Header many times since. And obviously it's, I, I have such a more appreciation, but he, let's just talk about him yeah. off, the, off the bat. Yep. He, he gave me Pankaj and, and, and Mizapur vibes, but not, not saying he, he was like him, but he gave me those the quality, like, um, menacing the quality, like heavy. He's, he's like, uh, Brando and the Godfather. Like he just brings a weight to it and not all actors can do that No, just by their presence. Uh, and the man just, I can't rave enough about this performance for Agreed. him. He was absolutely phenomenal, captivating every single second he was on screen. Amen. I Amen. loved him. Couldn't agree more. I, I was absolutely fascinated with him. I couldn't wait for him to get back on screen. I was thinking to myself, I, I, how have I missed how mesmerizing his presence is in those eyes. Yeah, um, great eyes. And uh, so believe, I believed everybody in this film, mm -hmm. but I was especially impressed, and I can see why so many of these stupid babies have raved about K.K. Menon, because this immediately catapulted him for me into an echelon of, oh my stars, yeah, and he's, he is in that category of the names we mentioned. I feel like when you do see a lot oh, more I want of him, to. Um, and <laughs> funny enough, two of our favorite directors work with our favorite actors. Mm. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> how Great talent, Rachel Harbosh and talents. Andre Kashyap yeah. work with, you know, Manoj, work with Nawaz, work with Pankaj, work with KK. Yeah. <laughs> no, Radhika. Well, it's just the natural byproduct of why wouldn't you want to? Any project that you work on, no matter how big or small or whatever it is, when you work with people that you have fun working with mm -hmm. and give you more than you even wanted, both from the aspect of a director having an actor give them more and an actor seeing the director give them, you, when, when you rap, it's like, okay, when's the next time we can work together? Yeah. So, makes sense. And uh, the next person, even though there's a lot of people, we'll get to all of them, was actually it was my, it was some of my favorite moments in the entire thing, but were with the composer himself. And we'll talk about the composition, but uh, say his name? Uh, P Piyush Mishra, uh, who's the composer of this and sings the songs, but he's also a character and a very interesting character. He's, he, uh, okay. I've I don't really... know. Did you, was he your second favorite after after KK? Yeah, I like. <laughs> yeah, and then I have a third after this. It'll be interesting to see yeah. who your third is. And there wasn't anybody I didn't. Oh like no, absolutely not at all. But he was, and I'd love to know Anurag's mindset and the creation of his character because the this very Shakespeare. That's the word I was yeah. just coming out of my mouth. This is Shakespeare, mm -hmm. and he plays very much the role of many of Shakespeare's plays where you have the proverbial or the literal court jester who isn't just there to be the comic relief. The court jester is actually giving you a profound uh -huh. message yeah. throughout the storytelling. And it was the way that Shakespeare loved, and that's one of my favorite things about him, is he loved to take society's norms and flip them on their head yeah. and take the people that were the outcasts and make them the heroes of the story and vice versa. Yeah. I thought he was perfect. He was hysterical. Yeah. 
I also love my, my sorry. My favorite scene in the entire thing was when KK and they were he and the guy in the blue in the with blue. the cafe were chasing around the room. Yes, like, outside. The, the, I love the end, but like that whole scene. I also love his phone conversation with no one. Yeah, <laughs> I love both of those. But that scene was so quirky yeah. and off the wall yeah. and captivating. I'm like, what is going on right now? I agree. <laughs> okay, yeah. so third, who's your third standout for you of the cast? Because I have an absolute third one. And actually, there's there's probably, this is actually two. maybe my second, if I'm really honest about it, uh, and assessing. I like the guy with the helmet a lot. Okay, yeah. Uh, but um, the girl, the what's her name? The one that he slept with and got pregnant. Or are you talking about the other one? I like, yeah. I love I both love, of them. I love them both. I love them both. But there was something, and this is a bias I can't help. I don't expect You're talking about the first girl. Yeah, the first girl. The one who, he was in the room with when he was naked. Uh, in the beginning. Uh, yes, who you get the idea that she likes him, but he's not interested and yeah. gets mad at her. Okay, her. Uh, Anya Rog's constant close-ups on her. The camera loves oh, she's her. She's captivating. What's she her name? She is Sorry, so to, beautiful. I want to mention her name. Uh, Jesse. No, oh, it's uh, Jesse? This yes. One? Jesse Rondawa. Uh, she played Anuja. Looks like she's in fashion. Another reason I get to watch that. <laughs> she she has a, a presence about her, and what I was apologizing for is any, I can't help this, but any actress who at times goes in different places and is, reminds me at times of Indrani, who's will, Indrani, will fascinate me. Who's Indrani? But what's very funny is I have Indrani on my laptop, and the short film I was doing, the actor playing my brother next to me, he saw my laptop open, and it's got this picture of her that goes multiple on the thing. He looked at him and went, oh, is that Priyanka Chopra? <laughs> she looks nothing like Priyanka. <laughs> Subtle racism. It's hilarious. We all do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I thought, I, my, 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 my thought about that was, of, of, of course you're going to think she's Miss World, because yeah. I think my hand is gorgeous. Um, so <laughs> that I do have a, anytime there's an actress, like some of the films with uh, Ashwarya when she was younger, mm -hmm. especially like in Joda Akbar when her eyes were brown. Yeah. I was like, oh, you remember me of you. Um, but I thought she did a great she job. She did great. Everybody really Both did a great girls, job. Both the girls I thought did really well. They were really, really well. strong. Uh, and um, they, one of my favorite things about Anya Rock, even though I love, I love almost all parts of Anya Rock, um, are... He's a writer first, obviously. He, that's how he got into it. Right. He's so fucking good at dialogue. And he's making, like Quentin. Yeah, he makes everything sound normal and yeah. natural, yeah. Uh, which is a, a gift to actors, to have a good written dialogue script. It's I've never seen, even though there's films that we, we didn't love a ton, like Dev D or... or, or uh, I, we liked Black Friday. It just wasn't... We didn't love it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Those would be down at the bottom for us in terms of... We didn't dislike them. No, but it was... His dialogue is always good. Yes. <laughs> like, he's just such a good writer. And, like, obviously, we loved Ugly. Obviously, Gangs of Wasapur, uh, The Sacred Games. Uh, all those are just so well written. This included the stuff that, that he... That was the sixth one, Ugly. Ugly, that's what that it was. That was the sixth one. I love Ugly. Yeah, I can't imagine... We, we mentioned Quentin a lot because he's so unique. He's so gifted. He loves movies, and he's a cinephile. He likes I making cameos in his films, too. Yeah, he likes making cameos. He doesn't have a foot fetish. You were absolutely right. I, oh, I know. So he sent me something. Uh, if you don't know about Quentin's foot fetish, it's a, little, it's a real thing. Uh, but Quentin uh, and the cameos, but yeah. I can't imagine that Quentin, being the cinephile that he is, doesn't know who Anya Rock oh, is. Oh, I guarantee He loves him. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. But um, his, his direction in this was so unique, and I thought he got – you can see his growth – in terms of from what we've seen of his newer stuff from Sacred yeah, Games to yeah. even uh, Gangs Wasper to Ugly to more recent stuff. And from even the film before this was Black Friday that we saw before this. And I think you can see his growth as a director. Mm -hmm. And he still, especially early in his, he still, he's loved it throughout his career. He loves using color as almost a character, but especially in his beginning. Because obviously mm -hmm. it, it was heavily in your face in Black Friday. Yeah. I think it's even more perfected in this, this one. This is gorgeous. And, and he, the way he worked with his cinematographer. Yeah, I would say. Uh, hold on, the cinematographer is. Yeah, the cinematographer is uh, Rajiv Ravi. I would. I worked with him a lot. I would. I'd be pressed to talk about which one is. This might be. I have to go back and look at them, but off the top of my head, this feels like this is by far the most striking because he's usually just gritty and color and not 
uh, striking for me in terms of the cinematography. Mm -hmm. It almost, it's, um, I, I can't describe it. I just know that the color in this and the use of color and the way things were lit and variations with the, with the, the color in the cinematography were standouts mm -hmm. uh, in, in the storytelling, especially the moments that they, they had with K.K. Menon talking to the group with the yeah. emblem behind him and that with his costume and his eyes Talk and then the opening group of, of them the with the with the red on their face so captivating yeah and then obviously he just uses cues of light mm -hmm. on certain scenes like on one person will have deep deep red and then yeah. another person and it's there's so many obviously uses and interpretations you can take from that um that that i He's, he's so good at that. He's so good at writing. He's so good at just incorporating it all. And obviously for the time, even though the, the issues I could find with this are minute, but in terms of like, it, it might be a little dated in terms of technology. You can't harp can't on help for that. that. The editing is a little choppy at points. I agree. Um, and so that would be my biggest gripe. I agree. Because, and that's a minute gripe. Yeah. Um, I, it didn't in, inhibit my, my viewing experience, but it's like, some of the editing could have been, I think, a, a lot smoother. Yeah, and I, I don't. That might have been budgetary. Might have been whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be my biggest gripe with the film. Um, but I loved all the 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 guy with the helmet at the beginning. I thought was really cool. I was actually really sad when I he know. was no longer a character because yeah, I thought too. it was so interesting. I thought everybody was great. I thought the we haven't um, talked about the lead. Yeah. The, well, the, well, I was about to get to him. Who the guy who plays the bully at the university? Who who. Uh, takes Dilip our lead and messes around with him. Yes. And I thought he was fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, let's go straight to, uh, uh, I believe Raj. it's Dilip. Yeah, Dilip. Yeah. Uh, Dilip Kumar. Dilip, Dilip Kumar, is it right? No, no. Like his name is, oh yeah, it is. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Dilip Kumar Singh. But they made a joke about Dilip Kumar. I, right. Which we but uh, I felt that Raj Singh Chowdhury uh, was exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like he did a, I, he was fully believable as a character who is uh, kind of, I love the scene. It's so little is said, but it was so befitting his character when he's finally going to, he's forced by KK Madden to run mm -hmm. and he's up there and he really isn't comfortable and he just says something awkward and then they're like, yeah, long live Dilip. I thought that was a perfect fitting just portrait of him the whole time until the very end i completely has like crazy believed yeah. that he got pushed to the edge because he started to get pushed right from the beginning yeah and just his his switch got flipped i was at the beginning of the film for most of the film i was like he, he's doing a good job he's not my favorite right um but then he flipped the switch and i was like i like it Mm -hmm. That's what I like. I just like, <laughs> I like a little, a little pizzazz, I guess, if you but were. But when he did it, he didn't no, it wasn't lose the character. Absolutely not. Because it would have been really easy for an inexperienced actor to do that and just go batshit crazy. Kind of like we saw in Dev D. Even though a lot of you liked Dev D, that was probably the first time in an on yard film that I've seen actors I agree. not do great. Not do great, where they did something and it felt like it was for effect yeah. rather than out of a natural. Even though I know you guys don't agree with that. That's, that's fine. That's fine. But that was like the first time that I'd seen that in an on film because he usually has actors really subdued, yeah, really, um, really natural. Um, but I thought he did a great job in the end part, especially when it was just him and KK, and he was like, he was like, I want to, I want to see her, I want to see her, because uh, she's having this crazy Hamlet moment in his head of, yeah, uh, I love her, I love her, she loves me, I know she does, right? <laughs> it's like, no, you don't know what you're dealing with. Uh, I, I fully believed KK was dying in that moment with his, the blood on his hands and the continuity that they did. I so appreciate the specificity of, if you notice that when Dilip gets shot, then he goes for the walk. And as he goes for the walk, they cut away in different spots and they come back and then he's on the ground and he's rolling. They soaked the shirt. And I don't know if they filmed it sequentially or not. If they didn't, even more kudos, but the bleed out mm -hmm. was believable and yeah. something like that can pull me immediately from the believability of the scene if i see a guy got shot and he's bleeding out and then the next cut it's half the blood you saw a second ago yeah that kind of detail uh and it just i love the movie uh, i want to talk about um the composer uh P say his name piyash uh piyash mishra and also sorry uh he <laughs> 
Hitesh Sorek. And did, forgive me, try to pronounce the names perfectly. Did the background score and the music production. And all the little songs. Yes. Um, but the, the, this is one of my favorite scores in a long, long time. I loved this score. Me too. One, they brought the my song back multiple, multiple times. times. I was so and glad I was for like, that. Oh, goody. Uh, <laughs> but he has such a great voice. Because that's him singing as well. That's him doing... Oh, that was him doing his singing. He did his own singing? I... I, I uh, it wouldn't surprise me since he's musical, but I didn't realize that because so often the, the actors don't yeah. lend their own voices. He... I, <laughs> Oh yeah, now you're making me question. <laughs> I just didn't know. I'm pretty sure that was him. If you look at the song, okay. I'm pretty that that's on the playlist. Right. It's him okay. singing. And so he was the singer of all the songs, which was great because he was sense. the singer and the thing. Uh, and uh, talk about some of the musical numbers that Anyorg, obviously, we've talked to our dost uh, of about how he likes to use music because he doesn't like to do big Bollywood numbers. Right. And there were actually a couple in this, but it was integrated into it, obviously. And they weren't. See, here's the thing. When he uses a number... He won't just make it a number that is have for, an item number for an item number that's just fluff and entertainment. Mm -hmm. He'll do it, and I I loved it. There's one one in particular, Over the tower. It's man. it's her and it's her song where there's a message in there. Uh, Most of them talk about I think there was a message about Afghanistan. Literally, <laughs> there literally what? Well, like it's like, been twenty freaking yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but like literally a message about how point like. Literally, it's happening, as you guys know, unless you're in a, a cave, <laughs> of what's going on with Afghanistan right now. It's, like, extremely relevant, obviously, because we were still in Afghanistan. Then. Yeah, we've been there but like, anyways, too long. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, just how poignant it was. Yeah. And also, like, when the towers fell, I'm like, oh, shit, we're... <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, so I love, obviously, the the vagina on Anurag, uh, as we've talked about. Yeah. Uh, to, to just say what he wants to say, because there's also... Big political undertones, uh, not political undertones, this is what it's about, well, it's politics. wrong. Um, yeah, let's get into the subject yeah. matter. <laughs> Sorry, this is a long, this is a long review. When we, if you notice, <laughs> if you notice the runtime of our reviews, if it's, it's not close, always the case. If it's close to half an hour, we probably love the film. Not always, but and, uh, it's usually pretty. And the Hunter is long because of the rant. But uh, also because it's a great fucking film. Exactly. <laughs> so... Uh, the movies we don't like, just look, if the review is under 20 minutes, we probably didn't like the film. Not always, but Not that's always. usually... That's kind of a rule. And it's usually true. Uh, but here's something I, I found that... Because I want to... One of the great things about Indian cinema is virtually every film we watch, you're learning something new. And I feel like it's going to be a lifelong journey of reaching a sub-level of understanding that most Indians just have by living there. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll ever reach anything approximate to what it's like to be an Indian in any way, yeah. shape, or form. But the, the being a Rajput, mm -hmm. listen to this definition. A Rajput, and forgive me if this is not completely accurate, but it says the meaning of that means son of a king. A Rajput is a large multi-component cluster of castes, kin bodies, and local groups sharing social status and ideology of genealogical descent originating from the Indian subcontinent. The term Rajput covers various patrilineal clans historically associated with warriorhood several clans claim rajput status although not all clans are universally accepted according to modern scholars almost all rajput clans originated from peasant or pastoral communities that is the entry point yeah of learning about what a rajput so to walk away from this and feel like yeah i know what a rajput is and what they're dealing with here uh, i'm like no. Yeah, little baby. <laughs> little there's probably, baby. There was probably stuff that flew over our head as Multiple well. Multiple things. In terms of references, but I feel like I got a lot of it because I, I really enjoyed this film. I thought it's overall a really... Where would you put this in your... In your it's your, high. In terms of his directing. It's Not including high. Sacred Games. Not including Sacred Games or Gangs. Gangs... It's, no, he's, you have to include Gangs. Gangs is number one. Well, Gangs is number one. Yeah. yeah. I, he'll have to do something extraordinary that is on the level of... Because Gangs is like the godfather. I yeah. mean, it's just... That he that may be his, you know, quintessential piece of art. Uh, I would say this is probably third for me after Raman Raghav because of Nawaz. Yeah, uh, okay. it's kind of like. Whereas here's a great example. Um, Raman Raghav is a lot to me like The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Whereas what The Dark Knight is all about is Heath. Without Heath, I don't know that I'd care that much about Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Raman Raghav. It's that character and it's Nawaz playing yeah. that role. And it's so good that I just want to watch it over and over again to 
just wonder at, at Nawaz. Whereas this is a far more well-rounded story yeah. directing everything else. So as a film, I think ultimately as a film, this is a better film, but I, I have such a love for it's also Nawaz hard and because Ramarana. It, it's a little more dated in terms of mm -hmm. like its quality, in terms of like yeah. picture quality than others. I love you. I think Ugly's too for me. Ugly's too. Ugly's, Ugly's great. I loved Ugly. Yeah, Ugly's uh, great. But I, I like Roman Raghav. Then it's it's this one's probably three or four depending on where how my mood is for Roman Raghav. Yeah, because uh, you know I loved Roman Raghav yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'd probably be three or four. It's right in the. But they're they're all so good. It, obviously, he is at so the, good. at the bottom it, it would just be uh, Dev D and and. I, yeah, Dev D is probably my least yeah, favorite. Yeah, Dev D would all. definitely be my least yeah. favorite. Uh, and I know there's quite a few more, and there's also just stuff that he's written that we could have included but, in this, and there's Sacred Games, which we loved. I really feel the comparison between him and Quentin is a great comparison because I feel I the we same do it every way. single time. We, we do it because, first of all, the love of film is so palpable in their films. Mm hmm. Um, and their their intelligence about storytelling and cinema is is genius IQ, uh, and their their thumbprint is all over what they do. That when you talk about which of them do you like least, it's like, yeah, I like that one least. But still, it's well, compared to most other filmmakers, it's Pulp fantastic. Fiction is my least favorite Quentin film, and it's still a <laughs> really good film. That's most people's favorite, yeah. <laughs> so it's. It's one of those things. Yeah. But anyways, uh, obviously we will watch everything on your Rogs Done, even the stuff that you guys don't think is good, uh, like uh, Bombay Velvet or whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, I, I still want to see because I'm curious <laughs> as to yeah. what happened. What else is out there? <laughs> what uh, is but out there? what should what should be our next on your film? I we. I'm still really sad we missed AK versus AK. Maybe we'll get to I that. I know. I think that would be fun because it's that would it's be like a fun a one. Quirky, uh, like docu mockumentary and it's on your rug acting which he doesn't do that much anymore um, so I, i'd like to see it so but anyways what should be our next on your film and kk menon yeah come please, on please uh tell us what the next kk menon should be for us in the comments below mm -hmm.